Hello, I'm uh, Maria Chin Abdullah. I'm the Member of Parliament for Petaling Jaya. I was a women um, rights uh, activist uh, for many, many years, um, 30 odd years. It was only in 2010 or 9 uh, that I actually joined uh, Bursay. Uh, since taking over Bursay uh, and being the chair in 2013, I have been, you know, a wide experience <laughs> from uh, being an NGO activist to organizing a street demonstration in protest. Activism for me is that um, as long as anyone feels that there's a need to change for the better, I think people can call themselves an activist. Yeah, uh, I don't think there's a hard and fast rule. Uh, whether you agree with the action of that person or not, um, they are activists yeah, in their own right. And we have to accept that kind of diversity in terms of our opinion and, and worldview. For activism, it's from your ideals and your vision and your uh, perspective yeah, of uh, what change is all about. You have to actually make it happen. I, I know there's a lot of um, different, different kind of making it happen, but there are choices that people can make. The importance of being an activist has to be defined by the person, one. Secondly is that you have a certain views or ideals that you want to put forward. I think that it's good to say it out, but at the same time, uh, preferably to also uh, take action. I don't believe that you need to wait for others because everyone, if you are a citizen of a country or, uh, or have some kind of uh, relationship with the issue, then it is really also the person's responsibility to actually act. Everyone is part of society. We, we have to learn how to speak out and not say that, uh, well, uh, because you are holding this position, um, you have to speak for all of us. I think everyone has to speak for themselves too. Collective voices can make a change. Yeah? And collective action also makes a change. If you reflect on Malaysia itself, uh, what happened to Bursa movement, that is not an individual action. It is not because of me or because of the committee in Bursa. It is because of the people in Malaysia. As a member of parliament, it is actually making sure that I actually deliver. I think that's, that matters most to people. I do programs and I classify according to the needs of the people. Yeah? Um, priority is definitely the uh, poverty because I find that there are pockets of poverty in Petaling Jaya and we have done uh, studies yeah, on the health of the community in Medan Chahaya. We found that you know there was stunted growth, people who suffer from diabetes, uh, heart uh, diseases and so forth. So we have a health program. So we build on what we understand are the challenges that people have and then only we provide um, some programs to actually facilitate. It doesn't help them unless they want to be helped. So we have uh, what we call Lima Pulo Keluarga um, Sehat. 50 families who wants to participate in our health program from actually exercising to understanding nutritional values of food to um, having regular checkup at um, the clinic Kesehatan and then now these 50 families are helping another 50 families in that same area to actually um, turn their lifestyle around. In Lemba Subang one, what is sad about it is that uh, we still have uh, children who don't have uh, regular meals yeah? uh, because their parents have to go out to, out to work so when they come back from school there's no lunch and all that so we also teach the kids how to cook simple meals so that they are able to, to take care of themselves there are also children who are stunted, malnourished so we actually uh, hope that you know the food bank helps them. So we started with uh, 20 odd families, now we have grown to 114 families but that is already feeding almost 500 people. So we have like uh, health, we have this food bank, we have the youth program, women, 
We also have on um, improving the transport uh, system in Petaling Jaya. We also have democracy and we also look at the housing, particularly in Taman Medan. Yeah? Uh, previously, it was a squatter area. So uh, to, to transform the squatter area, they have built high-rise. Unfortunately, the planning of this low-cost high-rise was bad because you only, they only think about giving people the structure without thinking that you know, there are also other social economic needs. Yeah, like so, uh, space for you to relax, uh, childcare facilities. The whole of Taman Medan has only one clinic because they have done to service 50 over 1,000 people. And there's no monitoring of the quality of housing there. Uh, three person died from a fire because the walls were stuck together. There was no escape route from the back of the house. You know, the local authorities um, they have to be much more vigilant and uh, impose some uh, SOPs on housing um, the, and the quality of housing itself because you're talking about people's life and also you're talking about safety, you're talking about cleanliness and you're talking about kids growing up in a better environment. So we, when we plan, we have to take that uh, more holistic uh, approach uh, which we have totally neglected in some of these areas like Taman Medan, uh, even in Sri Satya. Even when we run our programs, our greatest challenge is actually participation. There is also some attitudes that we need to change. There's a lot of uh, awareness on what do you mean by social responsibility and uh, what is it in for them to actually do that goto royal or do free tuition for children. So it needs a lot more awareness uh, because the apathy is still there. Yeah, even though I run this kind of program. And there's also that uh, expectation that the government will step in to, to pay for the problem. So to unwind all that takes time. Because the problem is too big for an MP or even a team of MP and uh, councillors or state assembly, we can't resolve the problem. It has to be built into the system that actually we, there has to be some uh, standard operating uh, procedures that this is how we run the housing, this is how we run traffic and health and so forth. So then you have a much more holistic system in place. Then when you want to raise awareness, you are actually teaching them that well, uh, just follow the system and you will get your healthcare, uh, you will get uh, access to transport and most of the time, uh, the failure is really enforcement. Right? For example, having houses where the walls stick together, just because you want to expand your house, you block off the passageway, which could be an escape route, that is actually enforcement. Because you're not supposed to build until extend until your your two the two houses uh, walls stuck, sticks together. You see, yeah. Uh, sometimes we have to do not the best thing that people love you for, but you have to do it because that's the right thing to do. Uh, you want to change that 61, 63 years of uh, system to a new system that says that you know no more under counter money. Uh, that will take us 10 over years. You can't change a system overnight. Uh, and that seems to be the expectation of people that when you have a new government, everything will change. Very sorry, the reality check is that you can't. Uh, but that doesn't mean that you can't do anything now. You have to do uh, things to correct the system, to change people's mindset, um, and to also do things that maybe people will hate you for it. But you know that you know it will uh, help in the long run. In uh, Taiwan, where if you go to Taipei and all that, there's no rubbish bins on the streets. And how did they come to that level? It's actually uh, 30 years of education. So you don't really depend on the enforcement agencies only, but you're educating the public to say that, okay, rubbish can be recycled, there can be services in the system to provide that, and that uh, there are industries to absorb these uh, recycled items. 
So you set up that whole system from education to industry, you bring in the corporate to be part of that recycling uh, idea, you bring in the government, you bring in the enforcement. So by 30 years, uh, people know that you know you have to bring back your your rubbish and not expect to throw it on, on the streets. So that is where hopefully Malaysia can reach. Yeah, but we have to start now. If they take 30 years, I hope that we take the next maybe 5, 10 years to actually say that okay, yes, we don't need rubbish bins in on the streets, but we will be responsible individuals to take our rubbish back. Uh, for me, I think it's because of my student activism. So I come from a different historical background. But if we have it in the system to educate everyone about human rights, about women's rights, about child rights, uh, we are on a good standing to start off. But we don't have it now. Uh, I always say that, you know, uh, the women's rights groups have been campaigning for the past 30 over years on sexual harassment. And we have always talked about sex education in schools. If we had done it 30 years ago on sex education, I think that the relationship between men and women may differ quite differently. Now we are talking about sex, uh, sex education. I think that's a good start, but we have to make sure that it works uh, and not have sex education piecemeal in little, little curriculums. It has to be part and parcel of your subjects. We have a topic on Kerwaga Negara An, yeah, citizenship. That is the place for us to teach about governance, about transparency, about anti-corruption and all that. So we have to look at that uh, curriculum and review. Are we teaching our young people the good values or we are taking all this too lightly? We have to raise the awareness and it cannot be just the MPs or it cannot be just the NGOs. It has to be everyone's responsibility to raise it. You have to um, think that you know it's not just because we have structures that the structures will sort out all the problems. Uh, it doesn't work that way. Because like for example the low cost flats, you can build a structure, right? You can build, uh, have bins there, but people throw it from top. So that needs uh, awareness, but that needs uh, individual responsibility. You don't throw chairs down. You bring the chair down yourself and throw it in a proper place. As a student or whatever, you definitely know what are the problems that you have. Whether it's your breakfast uh, program or the teachers or the um, structure of the school or your subjects or the hours that you spend on your subjects you have a right to express you have a right and you, you should express it to the teachers and the teachers should be much more inclusive la. it's no longer during my age where it's top down okay no asking question um, we have gone through that already we are in an age where people are more critical because we have access to more information. Last time we, we don't have the internet. What is important is when you get the information, you need to one check the information and two is to discuss about the information. So then you, you can start that process of change. The best thing really about the uh, internet, it really opens up and challenge uh, access to information but how do we uh, utilize it for the better of society this is where um, everyone has a, a responsibility I think that you know um, there's no hard and fast rule yeah as to what you can do but the uh, most important is that if you have an idea make it work Thank you. Thank you so much for me. Thank you. Yes. Salam sejahtera, saya Maria Chin Abdullah, Ahli Parlimen untuk Petaling Jaya. Minggu yang lalu, saya telah buat sesuatu interview dengan MCCHR dan pada masa hari ini, saya akan teruskan dengan soalan tambahan.
Saya rasa ya untuk mengadakan kaum di dalam kad pengenalan kita diperlukan kerana saya rasa ini adalah satu informasi yang diperlukan kalau kita nak buat uh, sesuatu analisis. Saya rasa isu rasisme itu tidak adalah berkaitan dengan apa-apa maklumat yang berada dalam IC. Kerana rasisme ini adalah berkenaan dengan kiraan kita, attitude kita dan juga uh, kesedaran kita. Adakah kita terima bahawa Malaysia adalah sebuah negara yang multicultural, multi-religious dan selama-lamanya ya kita dah tinggal dalam negara ini bersama-sama. Kalau kita menghargai perpaduan, bekerjasama, bersatu padu dan juga inclusivity, saya rasa aspek kesedaran ini diperlukan dan perlu dimasuk dalam sekolah dalam uh, agensi kerajaan dan juga dalam media masa kita supaya lebih ramai orang boleh faham ya negara ini tidak perlu rasisme tapi hanya perpaduan dan bekerjasama saja di antara semua kaum Congratulations to the RA11 for taking the initiative. Tapi uh, isu CCTV ini kalau tak salah ya telah dibincang di dalam mesyuarat MPPJ dan ini masih ada satu perbincangan dan saya harap ya boleh dapat satu keputusan. Mereka ada cuba tapi vandalism adalah satu faktor yang mana jadi satu kos kepada MPPJ. Tapi saya harap ya mereka akan mengkaji semula bolehkah kita ada CCTV di tempat-tempat macam hotspot area. Tapi saya juga menggalakkan ya penduduk-penduduk mengambil inisiatif juga mengadakan CCTV di tempat mereka. So it's a combination. So and we have to solve this problem together. I guess that the pavement, uh, we are still working on that, and hope that you know JKR, uh, whoever is the pembuat kuasa, will actually take heed of it. Saya sendiri sebagai ahli parlimen kita dah buat complain tentang jalan raya dekat sana dan juga di tempat-tempat yang lain. Yes, definitely. Saya rasa penyakit ya asma ada di bawah kategori penyakit paru-paru. Uh, Dan saya juga menggalakkan ya komentar ini pergi ke website My Salam dan semua kategori ada di dalam website itu. Dan satu lagi ialah permohonan untuk uh, My Salam telah dibuka. Dan sesiapa yang layak boleh ya uh, memohon untuk My Salam. Sekarang My Salam termasuk golongan uh, M40. Mereka semua ada sampai akhir bulan Mac untuk memohon untuk uh, My Salam. Saya menggalakkan semua untuk memohon untuk My Salam. Saya rasa seratus ringgit kalau dianggap satu lawan untuk setiap bulan memang tak cukup. Tapi ini bukan lawan. Ini hanya satu subsidi untuk OKU dan juga warga mas di golongan B40. Ya, yang mana mereka pada hari jadi mereka mereka akan terima seratus ringgit ini. Itu saja untuk satu tahun dan tiap-tiap tahun mereka akan dapat uh, subsidi ini. Tapi ada lain-lain skim yang uh, OKU dan juga warga mas uh, boleh memohon. Yang pertama ialah bantuan sarah hidup ya untuk uh, golongan B40. 
bila dah memohon dan dapat masuk dalam bantuan sarah hidup dapat subsidi seperti uh, e-kasih RM40 akan ditolak daripada bil elektrik setiap bulan yang kedua ialah ada subsidi untuk kanak-kanak OKU juga ada subsidi untuk air untuk sesiapa yang bergaji RM4,000 ke bawah dan juga ada satu subsidi ya jom shopping uh, untuk golongan B40 so ada banyak skim-skim yang disediakan oleh kerajaan persekutuan dan juga kerajaan uh, negeri Selangor so saya harap komentar ini boleh dapat maklumat uh, boleh datang ke pejabat saya atau pergi ke pejabat adun untuk memohon Saya bantah SOSMA dan juga bantah ya tahanan 12 orang kerana allegedly ya uh, involved dalam LTTE. Kempen untuk uh, membantah SOSMA ya dan juga menghapuskan uh, SOSMA ini adalah kempen yang sudah lama. Ya saya uh, sendiri kena ditahan di bawah SOSMA dan ini adalah satu prosedur yang sangat dahsyat dan uh, perlu dikeluarkan dari buku-buku undang-undang kita. So definitely no compromise. Cosma must be abolished. Untuk uh, isu blok E ini, saya rasa sesuatu tawaran telah dibagi untuk semua pembeli. Mula-mula dengan blok E ini ada 276 pembeli dan tawaran ini ada dibagi untuk 249 pembeli. Kerana ini adalah pembeli yang asal ya dalam tanah itu. Tawaran yang diberi kepada mereka ialah yang pertama, peluasan telah uh, meningkat daripada 650 segi ke 700 persegi untuk sebuah unit. So sudah uh, jadi lebih besar. Yang kedua ialah harga kos unit ini telah diturunkan daripada 45000 ke 35000. Pinjaman yang dibuat oleh pembeli ya uh, hanya 249. Pinjaman mereka telah dianggur oleh Kerajaan Selangor dan juga Peter Brickworks. Ini adalah tawaran yang dibagi kepada 249 dan mereka telah setuju kepada tawaran ini dan saya difaham construction is going to start ya, dalam tahun ini. Yang balance adalah 27 penduduk daripada uh, rumah panjang. Mereka diberi tawaran yang lain. Kalau sesiapa daripada 249 pembeli tidak mau tawaran daripada Kerajaan Selangor, mereka ada dalam waitlist, mereka boleh masuk dalam uh, tawaran yang dibagi oleh Kerajaan Selangor. Kerana ini hanya adalah tawaran untuk 249 pembeli yang mula-mula berada dalam rumah panjang dekat Blok E ini. Ada satu isu lagi ialah ada tujuh yang dianggap uh, pembeli kedai tapi kerana projek ini ambil masa yang sangat lama 15 uh, tahun dan lebih sebelum saya menjadi ahli parlimen tidak ada kontrak yang mana mereka adalah pembeli untuk kedai atau janji untuk mengadakan kedai di Blok E dan sekarang Blok E telah diluaskan ya. maknanya tidak ada tempat lagi dalam tanah untuk Blok E itu yang uh, pertama yang kedua ialah kedai-kedai ini adalah bengkel kereta saya rasa ya tidak beberapa sesuai untuk suasana dalam Blok E kerana ini adalah tempat kediaman untuk penduduk ya dan saya rasa ini ada kesan pada kualiti untuk alam sekitar dalam blok E lah. dan saya telah bincang dengan pembeli kedai ini dan bagi pandangan saya kepada mereka dan mereka juga dah setuju tentang uh, pendapat saya satu lagi untuk pembeli unit blok E ialah kerajaan Selangor akan menanggung kos pembiayaan daripada bank dan ini adalah untuk uh, 249 pembeli.
Untuk isu ya kekurangan guru-guru di sekolah-sekolah, saya rasa Kerajaan Pakatan Harapan ini telah mengadakan satu plan untuk menaikkan guru-guru di sekolah. Yang pertama ialah uh, sekarang kita ada 8,000 graduates ya daripada pendidikan yang sedia menjadi guru-guru. Ini adalah satu isu placement. Ada lebih kurang 6,000 ya kekosongan untuk guru-guru di sekolah. Tapi hanya 1,600 lebih ya yang ambil tempat yang kosong ini. Yang ketiga ialah kerajaan pada bulan uh, Februari telah ambil 3,000 guru-guru untuk uh, sekolah kebangsaan dan juga lebih kurang 800 guru-guru interim untuk uh, sekolah kebangsaan. So saya rasa kerajaan ada plan tapi uh, plan ini mungkin akan ambil masa selama 5 tahun untuk uh, menyelesaikan masalah kekurangan guru Saya rasa uh, the reform agenda is still intact with the Pakatan Harapan. There is no compromise about that. Even myself uh, sebagai ahli parlimen, saya akan janji ya uh, agenda reformasi akan diteruskan ya dan saya akan lobby, advocate dan usaha untuk menyampaikan reform agenda ini. What is happening now is that we should as citizens ya, yeah, we should still keep and be very loud and let our voice be heard that the Pakatan Harapan reform agenda must be kept alive and must be delivered and implemented that we must tell to those who are the elected representatives the mandate that we got on 9 May is the mandate that the people has given to Pakatan Harapan to fulfill not just the reform agenda but also to end racial politics and also the extremist religious politics we don't want that in malaysia and that is the new malaysia that we want to build towards so we must not forget about it and i will not forget about it i am uh, definitely behind pakatan harapan and i am still a PKR member the mandate that the people gave me still stand i will work towards that i feel that as citizens whatever it is the voice of the people must be heard and i really want to appeal to all civil society to actually state your stand you know what is the the malaysia that you want and what is the government that you want let us not forget the mandate that we gave to pakatan harapan government and that that mandate still hold we want a pakatan harapan government and that has to be stated out very clearly by each and every one as citizens as well as elected representative and that we will continue with the uh, reform agenda and i like to say a hot warm uh, thank you to all my supporters particularly everyone in T105 Petaling Jaya they have been marvelous from Bukit Gasing to Taman Medan to Sri Setia whenever i have any programs people have come out in droves to support the program so let us work together again to make uh, Petaling Jaya and also Malaysia a much better place for everyone thank you